Well, welcome back once again. And uh, I had a very eventful weekend. We had the uh, World uh, Champion uh, Taekwondo Tournament in Little Rock. We attended. Boy, I'll tell you what. What an exciting time. What an exciting time. There was kids from everywhere. And uh, the competition was fierce as expected. I mean, it was even, it was like ten times more fierce than I have seen it. Those kids were out for, they were out for everything. They wanted it. I'll show you a few highlights uh, as we go through this video. Unfortunately, our grandson could not measure up. Uh, he, uh, the best he could pull was a, uh, he just barely squeaked by with a third place finish in one of the events. The world competition is being held in the convention center here at Little Rock. Big, beautiful place. It has uh, top floors and bottom floors. Right now, what we're going to do is uh, go ahead and put some, uh, I've got some stripper in this bowl. It's, uh, what is it called? It's called uh, Clean Strip Stripper. I'm going to go ahead and strip off the paint on these clam shells. I could use lacquer thinner if I wanted, but you know, why bother? Just go ahead and put the stripper on, let it work, and then I'll go in and have some breakfast while it's doing its work, you know, it's doing its job. Again, you know, you got to kind of keep it wet. Uh, it's one of those, almost, it's almost like navel jelly, only it strips paint instead of rust. And you got you to keep it wet. You can't just let it dry out. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on both inside and out. And then just let it sit for a while and see what happens, you know. And you can't be sparing with this stuff. You know, lay it on there. Get it on there. You want the paint to come off. And then when we're done, we'll have to put the old navel jelly on and get some, some, of, some of that uh, rust off there. Get all of it off, actually. All right, the next step is to go ahead and start putting on some uh, primer paint on this thing. You want to always try to prime your, your metal before you paint it. And as usual, I'm using the, uh, the very dark uh, Rust-Oleum automobile, which is really good stuff. Any rust that might still be on there, the Rust-Oleum will hold it in place. Now the Rust-Oleum, you know, it won't eliminate rust, but it binds it. It keeps it from spreading. And that's exactly what we want. And there's the sign for it, where martial artists unite for an exclusive world-class event. Little Rock, Arkansas. This may be a little difficult for you to see, uh, especially in this camera. I've got it out here in the sun, kind of help you out. Hopefully, hopefully it'll work. But right here where my finger's at, after the first stripping, there's still a little bit of paint left. And I don't know if you can make that out or not, but that is not black. It's actually very dark brown paint. On the Atmotor Kent 856 that I restored, the clamshells were dark brown, very dark brown, and I haven't been able to come up with that dark of a brown paint. But it was very dark brown, and the main body of the transformer, the laminated plates, were painted black. Yeah, we're going to give this thing a second stripping now. Get the you know the remaining little areas that wanted to be stubborn. I've had to strip stuff you know three, four, even five times. You know, just you just got to do what you got to do. You don't worry about it. You know, you go ahead and put it on there, slather it on there, just like barbecue sauce. Put it on there and then go on in the house and watch your favorite movie or something or get a cup of coffee or you know, just bug the old lady. Try to educate her best you can. I'm always trying to do that with grandma and, and wifey. They, they, like, they like my educational uh, classes that I provide from time to time. Good stuff, they say. Don't you like my educational classes? Yeah, grandma, Grandma's going to get one in the oscilloscopes, how to use the probe today. You want to be part of it? No, thank you. No, thank you. Well, don't you like my classes? You always I don't say like you do. Your radio stuff at all. I, I can't believe you're saying that. Do you realize that's grounds for divorce? Go ahead. <laughs> Are you kidding me? No, I'm the not. judge would rule in my favor on everything. I doubt it. <sighs> the paint stripper did its job, and now I've loaded up the navel jelly, and we'll let it do its job. This area also has a streetcar trolley. Kind of a neat little deal. Central Arkansas Transit goes up and down these streets on these tracks. This is the uh, Song um, uh, Martial Arts Gate in Little Rock. Because Little Rock is the home of the American Taekwondo Association. A lot of folks didn't know that. These are, uh, this is our grandson, his good buddy, came to uh, with us. 
Nice place. There's a garden on the inside there, all dedicated to the founder of the, Amer of the American Taekwondo Association here in Little Rock. The rust is gone from the clamshells, and I have to admit I did a little bit of cheating on this. Uh, after I removed all the rust with the navel jelly, I handed the two clamshells off to uh, our chroming department guys and the supervisor on the first shift. He stuck it down in their acid vat and ate off whatever little remaining rust that was there. You don't have to do that. I just wanted to kind of double make sure that I had gotten all the rust. I got, you know, 99.9% .9 of it, but he stuck it in the acid for about 30 minutes, brought it out, and it just looks fantastic. <laughs> you know, just great. I could have done the same thing probably with another another hour of soaking in navel jelly, but I figured, I figured, you know, why not? Let's see if that vat will do something for me. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to take some more of that automobile primer and the uh, the darker stuff. We're going to paint first the inside of the clamshell. We're going to go ahead and get that coated real good on both clamshells. Coat the inside. A couple coats and then uh, when we get done with that we'll go ahead and work on the outside. This is what's called the wall of vision. It covers the chief masters, the, well, the masters, chief masters, senior masters, and all the founding members in their photographs. The founder was H.U. Lee. H.U. Lee. There's the uh, wall. This is the International Gate and Garden. A few statues. Nice place. Really a cool place to come. If I was a college student, this would be the place I'd want to come and do my studying. Meanwhile, while those two are drying on the inside, this is how our transformer turned out from yesterday. Looks real good. We're going to go ahead and put a clear coat on the outside of that now. And that will be the last step for uh, this part. So we'll give it a nice clear coat. The sparring competition for world champion is about to begin. And there we go. They're after it, boy. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Good stuff. Good stuff. They're going for it today. Oh, boy. Well, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and flip it over and do the other side here. I just want to get them well protected. Well protected. I'll tell you what, it, it, it's hard to beat this uh, Rust-Oleum automotive primer in a spray can. I mean, if you want to use a spray can, this is the stuff to go with. It just, it does a great job, it goes on good, and it really protects the stuff, you know? And here's John for his offering to the judges. Good, John. Good. These judges are tough in their scoring. Holy mackerel. Nice 
9797 and 98 for John. Like the chassis itself, the clam shells do have a little bit of pitting from the heavy rust it had. But there again, we just have to live with that. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and hit this with a little bit of brown, that dark brown. Oh man, that's looking better already. Look at that. Ooh, that's going to be nice when it dries. It's almost copper, don't it? But it's not. It's walnut. It's called walnut. Darkest I could find. And it looks nice once it dries. It's time to start soldering up the wires on this transformer. It's been painted and everything's been cleaned to the best of my ability. But before I do, I've got all the, by the way, i got all the wires cut and everything. All the ends have been tinned and ready to go. And I'm going to go ahead and use, I've decided to go ahead and use black wires instead of brown. Because, you know, ARRL, -A 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 American Radio Relay League Standards, uh, show black wires for the primary. So I'm going to have two black wires here instead of brown. And there will be a shorter black wire as a center type to ground. So that's how we're going to handle that. And, you know, if an individual doesn't realize that, you know, in the future that the two black wires, the long ones, uh, go out to the, uh, to the switch and the electrical plug and the short one goes to the crown. If he can't figure that out, then, I mean, if he can just by looking, you can see that. If they can't figure that out, then, you know, they, they probably shouldn't be messing with radios anyway. <laughs> anyway... Before I solder them up, though, a little bit more work needs to be done on this transformer. This, uh, can't hardly make it out too much, but this, this has become really flaky through here. I mean, that paper is just barely, I mean, just barely holding together. It needs to have something applied to it to help stick things together and to cover up these little copper wires. You can't make out the copper wires too good in this camera, but they're there. What I'm going to do is use clear nail polish. I'm going to cover all four areas on the transformer with clear nail polish here and over there and the two on the bottom here. Give them a nice couple of coats of clear nail polish. That'll keep the paper from flaking and it'll also protect those wires, give them a good insulation. Alright, let's just go ahead and just start slathering that stuff on. Boy, all that paper is loose already. Just, uh, you know, just putting it on there, that paper is shifting around and moving around. Did you see that piece move just there? Probably not. <laughs> anyway, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give everything probably a couple of coats. Well, that takes care of that. All four uh, of those areas on this transformer have received two coats of the clear nail polish. You know, yeah, you, you could have used something other than nail polish. Q-dope, you know, anything like that, I suppose. Even a little shellac or... Even a little varnish, you know, or something of that nature would have worked just as good. We're getting close to wrapping up this transformer and this video. <laughs> it's been a pretty long video. But anyway, I've laid the four wires on, that go on the left-hand side in place and with the tinned ed ends of the wires laying on the pads. I got them positioned as best I could. Now, those pads have a lip on them. The pad, you know, is shaped like this. But on the back side, it has a lip on it, so it sort of looks like this. Okay? Yeah, the ideal thing is to get the, you know, the wire right in the corner and solder it in place, but the way they have brought up other wires from the inside of the transformer and soldered it to the pad makes it a little bit difficult. And some of these wires, we're gonna wind, they're going to wind up being out here like this, instead of right up against the corner of the, of the pad. But that's okay, as long as they're soldered solid. I'm going to go ahead and solder these four in first, the two brown ones and the two black ones. Alright, that's the first four soldered on. I'm going to clean up the solder joints a little bit with alcohol. Boy, those pads were really corroded. They barely took the solder. But they're on nice and secure now. Now all I have to do is bend each of the wires down. You know, being careful not to cause any problems up there on the on the soldering pad, just kind of bend them on down so all four of them will come out the bottom just like that. It's going to take a couple of hands to do it right. And that's all she wrote. She's all soldered up and ready for the clamshells to be put back on. Now, instead of going with that old cardboard cover, I had a change of uh, mind here and I decided to go ahead and take some of that plastic and form a cover with it. And, of course, you want it so it doesn't slip all the way around 
through this hole right here where it winds up on the other side. So it has notches. You can see the notches there on each side. Anyway, it's going to go down all the way down into there like that. And then when I put the cover back on, it'll cover up the, all of the contacts. And it'll stay in position. As I said earlier, I don't like the screws that Atwater Kent used to hold his transformers together. So, you know, I'm going to get rid of them. I don't like them. These are the screws that I selected to put back in there. Nice chromed uh, hex head. They, they have an internal hex hole there for, where you use an Allen wrench for it. I think they lose, look much better. We're going to have new nuts and new washers, new lock washers. And I think that just beats all the pieces, this, this rusty old crap. It's just not, you know, it did the job, I guess. But I want something really cool in there. This is what we started with. And here's what we have now. I think it turned out pretty darn nice. I love to, you know, I really like taking old transformers and turning them into something that really looks cool. There's just something about these old power transformers. Anyway, I'll probably give it one more coat of clear, you know, to cover the, uh, the bolt heads, the new bolt heads, which I, I like a whole lot better. They just look really cool. And the nuts and the washers here. Just to give it one more shot of protection, if some of the clear gets on the wiring, so what? Doesn't matter, won't hurt it a bit. Okay, next time, then we're going to go ahead and try to work on this tuner. It's this tuner and the piece that sits, uh, you know, the, the tuning wheel. That piece of rubber back there has got to come off, that black rubber you see. Let's see if I can get, get it in the light here, you can see it right there, that black rubber. It's all got to come off. This shaft is frozen, it won't even move. We're going to see what we can do. Now the tuner does operate. You know, it does come in and out. It's a little stiff. But we have to get the rust off of the uh, mica trimmer cap area there and try to get the... I'd like to get that mica out of there. I want to completely submerge this in, uh, in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. I'd like to get the mica out and get it clean and everything. Get these wires off. And that will hopefully all begin next time with the next video. I appreciate everybody having stuck with me so far on this. I've gotten some really good comments, you know. I'm glad that some of y'all are picking up a few tips here and there and enjoying it. Thanks a lot. And uh, I guess until next time, this is John. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Roger here. He just won a world championship, didn't he? Woo! Didn't you? Yes. Congratulations. Thank Congratulations. You. Good job. Thank you. <laughs>